Hey, hey, hey. The objective of this video is the purpose and the interpretation of p-value. So let's go to page three of your notes. Now, as I mentioned before, in terms of a statistics, um, a test of significance, okay, I'm asking if the sample data gives us evidence against the null hypothesis, against the status quo, in favor of the alternative. So as I talk about, um, I have a Galaxy 7, and let's say that the battery life is um, 18 hours, and I'm making this up. Well, the company is saying that the battery life is 18 hours. And I'm saying, well, it doesn't seem to last 18 hours. For me, that would be the alternative, that it is less than 18 hours. And based on that information, that's when the company would say, no, that's just your, you have a bad phone. And then I'd say, well, it seems like to me a lot of the people that I know um, their battery life lasts, you know, less than the 18 hours. And from there, we've got a hypothesis test going on, guys, because their point is, prove it! So the hype is on. But I know I haven't answered the question about, well, what does that have to do with p-value? So, here, when it comes to the idea of a p-value, it is that we're interpreting the probability of getting a result at least as extreme as my sample, assuming that the HO is true. So if my, if, if, so as I'm doing this, and we're going to do another problem in context in a few minutes, and you notice that I crossed out the, what the book had, because um, honestly, I didn't like the way the book said it. So yeah, normally I take it straight out of the book, but nah, no bueno. And as we look at the idea, well, here's the interpretation of the p-value. But I also want to slide back up here. In our statistics test, the ho-ho-ho states that the claim we are seek, um, seeking there's evidence is true. So there's evidence to support it. Okay. But the probability of the strength against the evidence, against the ho-ho-ho, and in favor of the ha, is called the p-value. So we've just talked about in the last two minutes the interpretation of the p-value and the purpose of a p-value. Also, if you have not had a chance to write this down here, write down the idea of reject and fail to reject the HO. And we're going to talk about how the p-value is used to make that determination. And it's made because of this. When the p-value is small, it's evidence against the HO. So that means that we are going to reject the, reject the ho, ho, ho. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. So a small p, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And your question is, well, why? Because here it's really unlikely that the null hypothesis is going to occur, that it's true. So it's unlikely if the company says, yeah, it is what it is. We're saying, well, no because you have such a small p-value. you We have a p-value of, of less than 1%. So if that's the case, how are our results likely to occur when you're saying that your battery does last 18 hours? Because my, my results show that they don't. And that is the per rationale behind a small p-value is as evidence against the null hypothesis. So let's pull this together in a nutshell. When you have a p-value that's small, you're going to reject the HO, reject the null hypothesis. And there's convincing evidence for the alternative. When the p-value is large, we're going to fail to reject. Okay, now this is double talk. And yes, I know it's double talk, but... The one thing you never do is say this. You never say support. Because as we mentioned in class, the idea of a jury system, they weren't found innocent. The evidence could not support their guilt. 
So they will either say guilty or not guilty. And this double talk failed to reject is the same idea. Again, we never use the word accept. You want to, you can use the word support. Evidence supports, you can get away with that. But the idea of accepting, no. Okay, now, let's do an, here one more thing before we do an example. I know you're, I mentioned the p-value and I'm saying low, and your question should be, well, what truly is low? And how do we come up with that determination? So, yes, we are going to compare the p-value to a fixed alpha level. And what is an alpha level? An alpha level is literally 1 minus the level C. An alpha level is usually given to us, or we can determine it by looking at our um, confidence level. And as you can see right here, the confidence level is 1 minus... I mean, yes, the, excuse me, the alpha level is 1 minus the level C. That gives us the alpha level. But if we don't have that, there's two things. The p-value we are going to use when it's never given to us, when it's not given to us, though, is, not, is um, 5%. And also here, that is going to be, again, our, our fixed value of alpha, um, um, per problem, meaning sometimes it is going to be um, 1%, sometimes it's going to be 5%. Just like your level C changes, your p-value is going to, um, is changeable. So when I say fixed, I mean it's a number that I can use for that one scenario. Um, it won't vary within the scenario. Now as we're looking at the idea of having doing a comparison of the fixed value, what we're doing here is we're going to compare our p-value to our alpha level. When we compare our p-value to our alpha level, when p is greater than alpha, we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. When our p-value is less than alpha, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So we're looking in favor of the alternative. Let's keep going. Go to page four of your notes. Okay, so on page four here we have, uh, we're still talking about the Jordanian children um, potentially being anemic. So as we can see here, I've got um, the mean to be 11.3 and the standard, standard deviation of the samples to be 1.6 and we have a p-value of 0 .0016. So, here we want to explain what this means in this setting. Well, first of all, what, would the, um, what does it mean for the null hypothesis in this setting to be true? Well, if it's true, that means the Jordanian children are, um, are not at risk and they're okay. Because remember, your null hypothesis is saying that Everything is okay. It is not a problem. That would be the null hypothesis, your HO. Your alternative would be, in this situation, no, I think it's a little low. But for this situation, we are claiming um, that it is equal to 12, which means they are not anemic. So as we continue looking at the idea of the probability value, um, in context, and they should say interpretation. Okay, there is um, a point zero zero one six chance of getting a sample mean of at least 125 by chance if the null hypothesis, which is the, the mean hemoglobin for the Jordanian um, children, if that is true. So, and this is going to take some time for you guys to um, get this. Some of you actually may never get it. It's one of those hard interpretations, and you won't, you'll still be fine. You might have to eat a couple of points um, when, it, when the question's asked. But here, look at that small chance, okay? It's very, very minute. So, that is the whole thing. And in this particular problem... Um, if we had to make a decision on whether to reject or fail to reject, and this is not what they asked, this is not what they asked, but if they asked 
would you reject or fail to reject in this situation because you have such a small p-value? Your p-value is 0 0.0016 versus they don't give an alpha level. And I mentioned before, if they don't give you an alpha level, you just make it 0 0.05. Okay, and that's obviously less than. So what I'm doing here is adding more to the question. This is not answering that question. So with this being said right here, we're going to reject the HO. So rejecting the HO, rejecting that the null hypothesis is true, that means that we have to fail to reject the HA. So our premise is this. We are rejecting that there the children are not at risk. We are rejecting that with that low p-value. So yes, they are at risk. So, but this is where, this is bringing everything together in the p-value. So like I said, I answered more than they said. Now let's look at number 13. And we're looking at the SRS, 16 children that are um, 16 left-handed. Okay, we have a p-value here of point um, 0.2184. Um, what conclusion can we meet at an alpha level of 10% and then an alpha level of um, 0 0.05? Okay, so in both cases, as we look at your P versus your alpha, in both cases, it is greater than um, your P value is greater than your alpha. Okay, so in both cases, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So with that being said, what does that mean? We do not have evidence that the proportion um, is different. Okay, because remember, we're going to fail to reject, or I'll use another phrase, support the HO, which means that we're going to reject the HA. And what is the HA? The HA was that it is different. Okay, so, so we're rejecting the HA, and the HA, like I said, is different. So, TTFN, ta-ta for now.